drawing comics. I'm going to have to do a little bit of editing there. Um, and I'm going to pick off from where I left off last time. Which is Conan getting saved by his friend. It's a really great um, page. You know, I've, I've been mentioning it quite a lot. I've been... Um, admiring it for uh, some time now. And I think it's just so well done in terms of how the story is told, the drama in the scene. You know, it starts off with this panel right here where he's kind of isolated. You could see there's like no hope around him. It's this dying tree, there are vultures hovering around him. And uh, any minute now is gonna be his final breath, you know, considering it's the scorching hot sun, he's sweating and he's crucified on this tree. Um, but despite all that, you know, with the vultures circling around, he sees a sign of hope, you know, and that's the cool thing about all these panels, you know, you really are taken through these, this, like, emotional roller coaster that he's in from just realizing how, uh, desolate his surrounding is to uh, the emanating doom to all of a sudden seeing this little dark shadow in the distance. And him just, you know, in his face expression, you could even tell, you know, as it progresses towards this, that he's just like, is this a mirage? And that's the beauty of John Buscema's work. You know, the, the artist for this comic book, um, he's able to convey that with not too much detail, but still there is um, this realness to it. You know, he really does capture emotion, capture the energy and the drama through all these panels and um, how he tells the story in each one of them. So we got, um, yeah, we got this panel right here and he's just like trying to understand what he's seeing. Is it a mirage or if it's reality, if it really is a sign of hope. And then you see gradually the figure getting bigger and bigger to see that it's his friend. It's a really cool page. You know, I, re I think it's a very well done. And it just demonstrates his ability beyond just anatomy. You know, you could see how well he draws the human figure, even in its smallest form. You know, here and here, you could still see some sort of expression in his body language. Even in the small little dots that he uses for eyes and mouth, it still conveys some sort of uh, feeling. And it's proportionate, too. You know, you look at it, and it does make sense to the rest of the body. The eyes aren't incredibly big despite it being at such a distance at a far away distance so you just make sure to um, include that little detail in certain lines there to um, emphasize muscle um, I think again just a testament to how amazing his artwork is all right well with that gush I will jump into drawing the rest of these panels. Unfortunately, I already noticed it, how mm, the angle on this is wrong. So even though I might have gotten the face right to some extent, just because I didn't take into consideration the angle of the face, throws off, um, throws off this image. So I'm a little disappointed with myself there. But uh, it's not too late to draw better. Which is what I'm hoping for this time in the next panel. It's such an important part of, of drawing, like to, uh, to be aware of the angle of whatever it is, like whether it's the, um, the pose, the figure, the building, the camera angle of the entire panel, you know, like all that is so um, so vital when drawing from reference, especially. Um, and that's why it's important to like sketch things out. Like if I was to sketch out the face in its most basic shape and the most basic form, I would have 
made sure to give it that angle. So I'm going to finish up this panel and uh, we'll start on a new one. But even on this panel right here, despite it being so small, as I mentioned in the other ones, it's still proportionate. The eyes are still proportionate to the rest of the face. Yeah, I really commend his dedication to it. Like, he doesn't take shortcuts. He doesn't immediately say, oh, whatever, it's small. No one's going to notice. I'm just going to, you know, draw these, like, little squiggles here and there. Like, he still makes sure that um, things are right, that things line up. And again, not a lot of detail. It's not about the detail. It's not the fact that he's like going in there and drawing all the minute little muscles and um, wrinkles and all that other stuff. And this is what I love about his work is that he doesn't need all that in order to bring the panel to life, in order to bring the characters to life, in order to convey the emotions and uh, the drama in there. He doesn't need to take it to that point. I'm not saying it's bad to. You know, there's plenty of great work that really is detail-oriented, and I'm not knocking it at all whatsoever. I just am really fascinated with um, the brushstrokes that he uses. Like, just with quick lines here and there, he's able to breathe life into the characters, into the panel, and I think that really shows such... Uh, beautiful artistic skill. He has that je ne sais quoi, you know what they say. That certain something. And I'm sure there are better words to describe it. I'm going to say passion. He has this passion for drawing. That he really is able to... Um, that he's really able to bring to life. And I'm kind of working on that myself. Like, I really would like to be able to... Um, breathe life into a drawing without going into a lot of detail. I used to study hyperrealism. I used to study and try to get like all the tiny details. And that was mainly for practice. You know, I was really trying to improve my hand-eye coordination, my ability to recognize detail. And I just challenge myself and see like, well, how far can you take it? Rather than it being like my focus, you know, my artistic focus, like I will pursue uh, hyper-realism for the rest of my life. It wasn't really about that. It was just all those other things I just mentioned. It was, it was more of like a challenge to myself to um, make the process of getting better at drawing more interesting. I would sit down and say, okay, I'm going to spend as much time and as many hours as necessary to get down every single detail as I possibly can. And once I achieved that, I was like, okay, great. You know, if I'm capable of doing that, let me set myself a new challenge, which is just learning this, you know, learning the ability to uh, not have to go into such hyper and realistic difference and kind of change the experience. You know, I think that with hyper realism, it is about sitting and doing all the nitty gritty details, whereas I do enjoy more of like a free-flowing sort of experience, you know, where you're sketching out real quick the uh, parts of the body and you're just kind of working at that pace 
throughout the entire time. You know, it doesn't become this like um, rigid process as much. Or isn't the predominant process of the drawing. Because there are even in this, you know, there are points where you kind of do have to get into the nitty gritty details to, to capture um, to capture a moment, to capture a scene and emotion, to convey any of those things. Like, there'll, there'll come a point where that's necessary. And as I mentioned before, you know, as long as you're drawing, that's the benefit of it. You know, that's, you're gaining all that. So, um, when I was doing the hyper-realism, it benefited towards other things, you know, like um, I just mentioned, there comes moments in, in this kind of drawing where you need to do that. So, um, I didn't lose anything from really trying to get as good at detail drawing as possible. In fact, it turned into a positive. It contributed towards making the drawings better. Which to me, and I believe it should be for pretty much anybody, is the point. It's the process. It's to enjoy the the illustration part. You know, if we're talking about illustration, it's about that. If you're playing music, it should be about playing music. It shouldn't be about uh, you know getting a big crowd or that's all. Those are all perks. Those are all benefits. But first and for, foremost, it should be about. Um, the craft itself like what are you doing like you really enjoy that i i love sitting down and working with the pencil i work i love working with pencils in general I like working with colors uh yeah i like doing comics and creating all these different panels and scenes like um that's fun it's challenging it's a lot of things it's nerve-wracking sometimes you know when you're just not sure if you could do it and then you sit down and you do it i can't tell you how many times that has happened to me where i was like i would sit down i would have an idea and then i wouldn't get up until i would get um that idea down as much as possible and then i'd keep working on it keep working on it and the more it turned out to be like the way i wanted to the more excited i got by it and then when I would finish it, I would be like, I knew it, I could do it, I could get this done. And then um, the next time I would sit down, the same the same scenario would happen. I would still go into doubt. I'd be like, what if it doesn't work out that way? Or if it's not gonna turn out? Um, not so much as, as now, you know, it's not as, um, as much of a, a an issue now, it's just more of time. You know, having enough time to do all that than it is about um, that sort of process. But just to put it out there, it is something that happens. It's, it's still something that reoccurs. Um, and you just have to move past it and just accept that. It's part of the challenge. It's part of the excitement, you know. Um, and just embracing that and working through it, I think, is really helpful. It's a helpful way to look at it, I believe. So if you have any doubts, just move past them. Don't, uh, don't entertain them. Don't let them consume you. Just remember that it's the beginning stage of something interesting. The biggest challenge is to sit down and just start doing it. Just do it. You guys might have seen that episode where um, Shia LaBeouf says it. Just do it. Yes, you can. 
just dedicate yourself and you'll see some results. Oh boy. So this is coming to a close, ladies and gents. I believe at the end of this week, not even, probably like in the next few days, I will start a new sketchbook. Um, so for those of you tuning in today, I'm gonna do a quick little overview here, just to demonstrate what kind of shape I'm gonna leave my sketchbook in. And that was the goal. And I'm probably gonna go back into it and add more to each page that, that needs it. Um, but draw all over your pages, you know, don't, um, don't make the mistakes that are very common, which, which is creating a center page and um, just avoiding everything around it. You know, these are, uh, it's your sketchbook. It's your place to just draw as much as possible. So make use of the pages and it'll feel good. It'll feel like you've really utilized all the space. You've really taken advantage of the sketchbook as much as possible. And these are just showing you guys how pretty much every page I try to keep that way. And the hands that you guys see here will be available. I'm going to be drawing them live stream as well. I'm going to be uploading them to the Patreon page. Um, these are just more practices that I was doing. I was trying to get better at um, watercolors. So that was my first challenge. Um, all these pages I'm sure you guys are familiar with this page but just moving on just to demonstrate how I try to fill up the pages as much as possible once I do upload the pages that I want you guys to have I'm gonna come back and just fill up all these blank spaces, you know, with hands, with uh, figures, with those simplified figures, as I mentioned. And it's slowly coming to the last few pages. As I mentioned, drawing something once is not enough. So you guys saw how often I was drawing all these different figures and practicing all these different uh, ways to draw the body in these simplified forms. I think really help um, get better, get faster, get quicker, understand proportion, better understand how these different body parts are in relation to each other. And here we're back. We're back to the recent pages. So going on from here, this is going to be the last panel for this page. This wonderful page before we move on to the next one. Hopefully that'll be today. Um, hopefully you guys see the new page. Let me just make sure there's nowhere else I can draw it in. Yeah, I don't really want to mix them up. I'm going to use the space for, as I mentioned, drawing hands and figure and all that stuff. All right, so we're going to do a quick measurement. You guys are going to see the process for starting out a new panel. And this is the benefit of drawing comics is that you get to, um, you tackle on the uh, the process from start to finish and you, you get to think about things like that like okay what do i do do i just draw out all the panels first on the page to make sure they fit properly do i draw out one, one panel at a time after i finish it um yeah these questions pop up you know all this all the stuff you haven't really thought about um if you're just jumping into comics um that's the perk from drawing from them you know, picking an illustrator you like, picking a comic book you like, and just uh, learning from it as much as possible. All right, so what do we got here? We got four, four inches, and I'm gonna say it's about as wide as this. 
this panel. Maybe slightly smaller. So let's just do that. We got from 10 to 15 as the width. So four inches and five centimeters. Four inches from here. And then five centimeters. sketch now so it's about like a little bit further up from half the page half the panel rather and we're gonna start out there Kai Archer long time no see How's it going? That's <laughs> okay. I'm glad you're back. Don't worry about it. You did miss some of the Conan panels, but you could always you can always go back. You can check out the history and just see what's going on. What's new? Are you um are you practicing drawing at all? Do you have time to practice? Mistake already. It's getting too small. I need to draw it bigger. I made the mistake of jumping into detail again before making sure it all fits in the panel. Hey, that's great. That's really cool. You're already designing tattoos? Didn't you just start recently? I mean, that's that's awesome. Just a uh, quick progress there. That's excellent. Drop it in the chat at some point. Let's uh, let's take a look. Let's see what the tattoo is gonna be. It's pretty exciting. Was it like a stay away camp that you were in?
Nice. Good job. That's excellent. That's really good. You're you're really getting some work done. Share the results. Share the results with Art Lounge when she gets the tattoo done. It'll be cool to see. And that's exciting to have your work um, as somebody's tattoo. That's very cool. Were you um, were you a counselor there at this camp? I do have a Discord server. It's on the Patreon page. I don't know if you've checked it out. Um, I launched it last week, I believe, or maybe a week or two two weeks ago. I'm not sure. But um, if you check that out, it's in the um, Twitch channel page. I have a link to it there, and uh, there's a Discord channel. Discord server. I'm not sure if you could drop it into um, the Twitch chat or something, or like a link to it or something. It's so much fun. I remember when I was a camp counselor um, at a stay-away camp. That's such a blast there. It didn't pay a lot. It wasn't really about the pay. It was just this... It was kind of like a vacation, really. And um, I think it was pretty good training, too. Like, uh, working towards being a, a teacher, a drawing teacher. I had... Um, had some training there with a bunch of kids. It was a lot of fun. And just kind of being away from um, all that like social media, internet, TV, and just kind of enjoying nature and doing all this stuff, all these activities with all the different kids, seeing them improve, getting, getting them more excited about it doing all this stuff and having them take a break from all that. It was, it was a great time getting to know people. And it really is some a different experience, you know, having to, um, I'm sure you noticed it, just having to spend time with people every day and sharing bunk beds and that whole thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's a little different. Did you take a lot of pictures? That's something I didn't do enough of. I took good amounts of photos. Um, and it's fun to look back on them and just remember all those moments. But it's just so important to do that, I think, especially for something like that. And it's a great time. I've been thinking about it recently. I was like, hmm, maybe I would do a camp counselor again at some camp and then in the near future, next summer. Hopefully when all this like crazy pandemic stuff isn't really the case. Oh my god, that's such a bummer. You should have just gotten one of those like, um, what are those like, roller cameras? Like the ones that you just like, disposable cameras like those and just have the photos printed. I don't even know if they're 
places that print photos anymore. Um, but yeah, at least that. That's so ridiculous that they wouldn't let you um, take photos or whatever. But I know, I think like a lot of camps are very much about just like not being on the internet, not having that stuff around to just kind of break away from that experience, which I really enjoyed. I thought it was great. It really changes how you interact with people and um, that changes the game completely. You know, people nowadays always revert to the phone when things get uncomfortable. So rather than like figuring out how to make the conversation more interesting or interact with each other in a more interesting way, they just turn to their phones. So I feel like that's a really good, it's a good thing, thing that should be revisited by people more and more, especially nowadays because just so many people are drenched in all these social media platforms and all that. It's all right. It's no biggie. And whenever you get time, there's no time limit. they have you um, train in something specific? Like were you training to be a counselor in like a specific field of any sort? Or was it just like general camp counselor stuff? remember we used to do all these different things at night you know I think it was just like typical camp stuff where we'd start pranking people and like we would prank some of the um, um, campers there I guess like we would drag their bed out and at the middle of the night as as quietly as possible so they would wake up outside you know that sort of thing was, some of the stuff was kind of mean now that I look back at it uh, we were really young, but a lot of them took it in good fun. Some of them didn't. Some of them got really upset, but uh, eventually they came around and we made up for it. If they had like a really bad reaction or something, we would, we would try to do something nice to to make them feel better and not to feel like a target or something. But lots of good memories there. It's a lot of good, good times. Yeah, you don't want to get kicked out. I mean, it really depends. Like some camps are, of course, they're going to say that and they're going to be like, you don't do that. That's not encouraging it, not saying it, but. I think each, each place has its own. Like the time that I went there, it was less strict, but I think over time it might have changed. I don't know. I haven't really followed up with that camp.
I do remember being very sad leaving. It was like such a good time. You really are just living in a kind of a, a different world. It is a bit of a bubble. You know, you, you don't really care about anything other than that camp and people in it for, what was it? I think I was there for like two months. I want to say maybe three. I don't remember, yeah, to be honest, but it was a good amount. And in between that time, we had like three groups, three group of, of kids that would come in. So things changed up, even though it was for three months and you were with like the same group. We got to see like all different types come and go. I remember there was one prank that was a little too far. Like, um, one, a group of camp counselors actually managed to get this one kid's bed. And these are like, you know, they're all divided into different age groups. And one of them, and this is like the teenage group, I believe. So one of the teenagers, they ended up putting his, uh, his bed on water. Like they had like this inflatable thing and they managed to like quietly carry out the ma mattress onto onto the water and it was for like a short period of time before they woke him up by like throwing balloons on him to like get him up and have him swim over <laughs> that was ridiculous couldn't believe they actually pulled it off and then of course like the most um, basic one I remember was people putting up their boxers instead of the flag. So overnight, um, some counselors like went up to the flagpole. We had to meet at the flagpole, and they went up and changed the flag to their boxers. So when everybody got up to go into the uh, to meet at the flagpole, they saw that <laughs> as it. It was just like, it was those kind of pranks, you know, that's, that's a harmless, silly one. But definitely good times. So if we've got any viewers out there who are still pretty young, I, I would say it's a good time. You should definitely look into it for the summer find a good camp and uh, get a disposable camera for sure like really record those times because you might not get a chance to do it again who knows right I remember um, at some point there were like family members who were like requesting for me to come back, but I think I got busy with some other um, other projects that were popping up, and I wanted to do that instead. Which of course now I'm like, oh, I wish I went there instead, but at the time it was kind of important. about uh, camp and now it is 10 o'clock ladies and gents I will have to unfortunately cut the stream for today but I will be back tomorrow um, not for drawing comics at 9 
Instead, it will be the project stream. Um, comics, I think, are going to be once a week, it seems like. Unless you guys request to have more of it through the week, it looks like the project stream is going to take up uh, the other days until the critique session starts to ramp up and um, the Patreon um, Kickstarter patrons um, start to take up the time again. Until then, it's going to be the project stream uh, drawing basics at 8, project stream at 9 on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. But you guys can also, as I mentioned before, you could check out in the history tab, um, in the videos and highlights folder, there is the Patreon page launch and schedule change stream, where I go into in depth about um, the Patreon page and the changes in the schedule for you guys to get a better idea of what's going on in the future. Hey, good luck, Kyrcher. Hope you get that um, volleyball tryout session going. Hope you get selected. And with that said, y'all, thanks for tuning in. I uh, I will be, I will see you guys tomorrow. So if you enjoy the content, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button if you're on uh, YouTube or our, uh, other platform. Um, both help the stream get further. Um, that would be greatly appreciated. And I will see you guys soon.